Over the last 50 years, video games have grown from a geeky hobby into a massive mainstream business that dwarfs the music and movie industries combined. And now, video games are evolving again into immersive virtual worlds where we play and work and socialize. Now, this move from fun game to immersive world isn't anything new. Early MMOs like Ultima Online, World of Warcraft, and EVE Online all hosted thriving active communities, and they had all the joys and headaches of real world societies. And today's popular games like Fortnite and Roblox aren't just entertainment, they're gathering places where people hang out with friends, go exploring, and attend events and live concerts. To paraphrase William Gibson, the metaverse is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. Recently, I got to dive deeper into this fascinating topic with PUBG creator Brendan Green. His latest effort, Project Artemis, is an open world game with territory that's literally the size of planet Earth. It's a wildly ambitious project that tackles key technical and social issues that need to be solved if we're gonna build a functioning metaverse. So join us and take a look into the future. The metaverse should be a bunch of interconnected game worlds or just digital places. And they're created either by companies or by people themselves. Look at Rust, Minecraft, Ark, Survival, uh, Valheim, games like this where they just give you a space to be creative. To some extent, I think Minecraft is almost like a proto-metaverse because it's just a bunch of interconnected worlds. I think right now, like Roblox, as much as they're hoisted up as a kind of metaverse, it's still just lists of games. And that to me isn't, it has to be 3D. It has to be an open world lobby where you can go and access these games by viewing something in the world. For me, this is not about making money. For me, this is about providing this digital place because I believe this is an important thing to do. And that might make me sound a bit like a, a bit zealous, but I really think if you're making the metaverse to make money or to raise the price of your coin or to be the next hype thing, it's not the right reason. I don't care about brand partnerships with Snoop or with Gucci. They'll be able to just interact with the world because there will be tools there for them to do it. If they want to sell something in our world, they're free to, but I won't be chasing them for brand partnerships. I think a lot of people are building AOLs right now. I think they're trying to monetize this idea of a metaverse. It can't be a specific person's metaverse, at least in my opinion. There could be arguments made that the internet's the metaverse. We just don't have a 3D world yet for to access from it. And I think as well, like the world I'm building, it has to be accessible by at a bare minimum, a, a decent smartphone or a, a smartphone because it has to be accessible by everyone. Like this is just a, a portal. Your computer is a portal. Your Xbox is just a portal into this world. It has to be accessible by a kid in Africa or a kid in America or a kid in India or Australia with terrible bandwidth. And it has to be a space that they can access and have value as well. So it, there's a whole load of challenges here, but I think we're approaching it the right way in that, as I said, we're generating it on the fly as you move through. So how much we can generate for you depends on your device. You can still experience the world, maybe slightly differently to someone with a better phone, but that doesn't really matter because it's not a game, it's just a place. When I first started up there on Productions, I wanted to make big open worlds. I'd been dreaming about this and seeing like Forge 2 in Sony's offices years ago and getting to the edge of the map in DayZ, I always wanted to go bigger. And I thought if you could do 100 by 100 kilometers of a map size, that opens up so many more interesting avenues of gameplay like trade routes and really civilization level gameplay. Currently gaming, I found is to the trapped in a 20 by 20 kilometer box because that's how much space you can reasonably make with a massive team of artists within a reasonable amount of time. So we have like mathematicians and nuclear physicists and stuff on our research team. And we set about how do we do massive worlds? We're using machine learning on an engineering level to generate the world around the player as they move through it. Our agents are deterministic and, probably, and uh, persistent. So everyone sees the same world. So. What we're trying to do is build a plant because that's what I think the metaverse is. It's like a digital place, right? It's like a 3D internet, but that's what I think it should be. And I just don't think anyone right now is thinking big enough.
So I want to build like a massive open world lobby. So we're building this engine, which is a data oriented design and built as an ECS or an entity component system. So it's super efficient and it works really well on, on all cores rather than being restricted to a few. We're building this engine as a generic engine as much as possible so we can plug stuff in as it comes out. We're also building it to be hopefully open source and then fully decentralized and distributed because it has to be like a foundation for the metaverse. So it has to be everywhere and we can't hope to host it everywhere. So we want to make it open source so everyone can host a chunk of it or their own private world. We have Project Artemis and that's like the first layer of these worlds, right? It's like we're building a planet that will look somewhat realistic. It'll have a few different game modes or ways to interact with it, but really it's just going to be a big world. And should you choose to play games in this world, we'll provide you with tools to do this. Or should you just want to wander around and find a beautiful spot and sit and listen to music, well, you can do that too. I just want to create this like digital place for folks to go and be creative. I think that's what the metaverse should be, which is a space where you, me, everyone can go can probably create some digital items and then use this space to either earn money or to create game modes. You have to give players uh, space to, to earn or monetize themselves. I drew inspiration from CSGO. Uh, CSGO crates provide players with a way to earn money from playing a game. Uh, and that's where I always saw the crate system being advantageous to us. I thought, look, you can create almost an economy of skins here. And that gives players value out of the game, which to me is very important. And I think that's what Web3 and the metaverse should be is I can monetize myself. Blockchain ultimately, I think, and it's related techs like NFT and, and crypto will, I think, only be accepted by the community, especially gamers, when they're just a utility within the system. Right now, I say it's like we're trying to build a, a motor engine or a combustion engine in the age of horses. And right now, I just think a lot of people are trying to bolt things onto the horse to make it go faster without really rethinking the whole system and figuring out how do we create a new platform that these things are just built in. It's our aim, and it's been my aim from the very start, to involve the community from a very early stage. Right now, we're doing very technical dev blogs to get those players that really understand what it is we're doing. We're more doing it for hiring to try to get some good devs, but I really want to start building this kind of core layer of a community that gets what you're doing and isn't afraid to read a bit of a technical article and then maybe learn something new. I'm creating like a world for everyone, but I still think I need to have somewhat control over the world until it's relatively stable. And we have to make sure that our vision is first implemented before we start giving control to people. What I like about blockchain is that if you provide a way that everyone has just a single vote, it does allow your community to vote on where the money is going next. So if we're building a world and we're building it iteratively and adding layers and layers, once we have a two estate we're happy with, then maybe we can ask the community, look, do you want to add ballistics or do you want to add custom wind or something next? I think that's important. I think if you're building a world for everyone, you have to give them the options to have a voice and have a, a say in where this world is going. Look at the internet. We have a body that monitors and maintains it and stuff is added only after a huge amount of consultation. And I think if we're building a metaverse, it has to have some of the same qualities. I have these crazy dreams and listen, if I can make it, I think it'll be an interesting space. Having these spaces that we can come together and still have shared experiences is something very important for the future. The metaverse is tech's new wild west, full of tantalizing potential and big dreamers. So as the tech giants battle it out in their quest to dominate this emerging space, I love hearing about how thoughtful people like Brendan are working hard to build a metaverse that we'd actually want to be part of. We'll be posting more metaverse videos from leading thinkers in the space. So if this topic interests you, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want to learn more about building open world games, one of my favorite topics. Just check out these videos. There's nothing better than getting smarter together. I'll see you next week.